Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by renowned women business coach and author, Frank Leggett. Frank has a book out called The Art of Womanhood, and we're going to be talking to him about his story and how he got started into being a women's coach, because a lot of times when you hear women's coach, you think of a woman, but Frank is well-renowned. So, Frank, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely, Curtis. It is my pleasure to be here with you. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? I am a a pastor. Um, I am in my 40th year of pastoring. Um, and... So, so that's what that's what I do for a living. It's my training. It's my passion. It's what I love doing. Been doing it for four decades, and I'm absolutely privileged to be able to pastor the church that I that I have. My church is in Narstown, Pennsylvania, and last weekend was my 11th year there, and I'm honored to be there with those incredible people. Uh, I live in I live in the state of Pennsylvania, um, and so it's just it's just a blessing to do to to do what I do with them. But as you mentioned, on top of that, I'm also a a, a relationship or life coach for women and an author of a book that I do for that I wrote for women, and I'm a I have a twelve week course to help women to achieve the love that they desire, deserve, and have dreamed of since many of them have been dream of walking down the aisle. Okay. Well, before we get into all that, let's talk about your international ministry because you also have an international ministry. So tell the listeners what that's all about and how you got that started. It was early in the 2000s. I was home one day and I was home by myself. I had just finished breakfast. I was about to go upstairs and I was about to to leave the kitchen, walk down the the hallway to go upstairs. And on that wall, just as I was about to leave the kitchen was a phone, a wall phone. We don't even see those anymore, but there there was a wall phone there. And, you know, obviously I'm a pastor, I'm a man of faith. And the Holy Ghost, the voice said to me, call your daughter. I've got three of them, and he identified my middle daughter. And a lot of times, Curtis, you know, we go through life, we hear the voice, and we ignore the voice. Fortunately for me, that day, I did not ignore it. I'm standing there. I'm about to go past the phone. I look at the phone. I hear the voice. I pick up the phone. I call my daughter. Now, typically, she is very, very, very positive. And she she always answered. She had always answered the phone. Hi, Pop Pop. She didn't answer the phone that way that day. She answered the phone and she said, hello. And I stopped. Curtis, I stopped in my tracks. And I looked up to the ceiling as if I was looking up to heaven. And I said, I said, no, God, not my daughter, because I knew exactly what that brokenness meant. Now, I was able to assume some things instantly. If it had been a tragedy, she would have said somebody in the family or somebody close to us or somebody close to her had a heart attack and died 
or was in a tragic car accident and died, something horrific, she would have said it immediately. When she did not say it, I knew automatically that it was a man. And so, and so I'm saying, oh Lord, my daughter, you know, I help people with these issues. I help women. I'm saying, Lord, this can't be happening to my daughter. So I said to her, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, call me. I'll fix this for you. And we hung up the phone. She never told me what it was. Six months went by because she's a, she was a grown woman in her 30s. I didn't call her. I didn't badger her. Uh, but six months go by and the phone rings. She's on the phone and she said, pop, pop, I'm ready. Now, we did not discuss it during that six month period. And she said, when she said, I'm ready, I said, OK, hold your hand out, palm up. She said, what? I said, hold your hand out palm up so that you see the white part of your hands. And even though she did it, I could feel the frown on her face. And here's what I said to her. I said, if you do what I tell you to do, when I tell you to do it, how I tell you to do it, and why, I'm going to have that joker right here in the palm of your hand. She said, get out of here. And the reason why she said that was she had been upside down in the relationship. And what I mean by that is she had been pursuing a man. Um, and because of it, she was miserable. She was whining him, dining him, a whole nine yards, trying to please him so that he would see how incredible she was. Right. And hopefully this thing would go to the altar. But that is not where that is never where a, a woman ought to be. And so, and so, and so she was miserable and she was in that state when I called. I said, now, if you, I'm going to teach you one technique and I'm going to teach you not only how to do it, but I'm going to teach you the psychology behind it. I taught her. She's arguably the best student I've ever had. And she hung up the phone. She called him. She did the technique and she hung up the phone with him. And in 20 minutes, he was knocking at her door, pursuing her. What do you mean the relationship is over? I don't want you. The relationship is over. She said exactly what I said. It's over. And she called me. And here's what I, I left out before we hung up the phone. I said, now, when you do what I tell you to do, the way I tell you to do it, and it's going to happen exactly the way I'm about to tell you, because he's going to be in pursuit of you. And when that happens, because I know you don't believe me right now because of what you've been doing for the last couple of years. But when it happens, I can't promise you. I'm not going to guarantee you, but I promise I will try not to say I told you so. And when she put him out her house and he left, she immediately called me. It was like within an hour. She screamed in my ear. Pop, pop. It works. And so and so. I grabbed my mouth and, and, and I tried not to say it, but I couldn't. And it blurted out. And I said, I told you so. And then I started working with her. And within a very short period, a couple of weeks, she said to me, Papa, you need to write a book because women do not, not know the stuff that you're teaching me. And I said, really? So I wanted to test it out. So I went to my church. And I went to my women's ministries leader. I said, look, um, I've got some information that I think is life changing for women. Would you bring all the women together? And I just want to share. I just want to share some stuff with them, brought them together. They were blown away. And one thing led to another. And I started doing presentations. I started getting invitations to go do these presentations for women. And I ended up in Winter Park, Florida at a church. And I started there in Winter Park, my very first women's group. And I've been doing it. I've been doing it ever since. So let's talk about something you mentioned. You, you talked about that's never where a woman should be in regards yeah. to your daughter and being down and sad and pursuing a man. Tell the listeners yeah. where a woman should be if that's not where they should be. Okay, now, so God designed, so I'm going to come from a spiritual place because that's who I am, that's what I do, right? 
God designed that because when you look at Ephesians chapter five in the Bible, in scripture, it shows that the man is the head. He is the leader. And when you look at it in a sexual context, and here's what I want all your listeners to understand, that God knew that at the end of time, men and women would switch roles, that women would take on men's roles at the end of time, and men would take on women's roles. And so to negate that, he put something in our DNA of every human being on this planet in terms of how we should function in relationship with one another. All right. And so when you look in a sexual context, when a sperm is ejaculated into the vagina, the sperm has one objective, and that is to find and penetrate an egg. So the sperm, because it comes from the man, represents the man. And, and the egg, because it comes from the woman, it represents the woman. Now, the sperm has two characteristics. The sperm has a head and it has a tail. Why does it have a head? Because scripture says, husbands, you are the heads of your wives. Why? And so that means he is the leader in the relationship. Why does the sperm have a tail? It is because it is the man that was destined and designed by God to be the pursuer in the relationship. Okay. Now let's look at the egg. When in, when a woman is ovulating and still in the age when she is ovulating and having a menstrual cycle, she produces an egg every month. And that egg like the sperm does not have those two characteristics. The egg does not have a head and the egg does not have a tail. Why? Because an egg is incapable of pursuing the sperm. The sperm goes in pursuit of the egg and all the egg does is send out signals to the, to the sperm and says, hey, 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 hey guys, I'm over here. Now, now in, in, in real life, in real life, here's the problem. There are over, I've discovered, I, I've ascertained that there are over 30 mistakes that the average woman makes in her relationship. Now, while no woman makes all 30, the average and typical woman, every woman that I've worked with, has on, on average has made the first seven, uh, first six or seven. And so, and so the first one is a woman, when she meets a guy at the very beginning of the relationship, she puts him in the driver's seat of the relationship before he has ever earned the right to occupy that space in her life. Now, here's the benefit of being in the driver's seat. When a woman puts a man in the driver's seat prematurely, he's making all the decisions about the relationship. He determines how fast that relationship is going to go, whether it's going to go six miles an hour or 60 miles an hour to the altar. The man or the driver determines the direction of the relationship. Are they going to go straight to the altar or, or are they going to go around around Abraham's barn? The man is going to be the decision maker in that relationship. And not only that, the driver is the one that's being pleased. It is the passenger that is the pleaser. So when the woman brings a man into a relationship and hands him the keys to her life, prematurely before she's even ascertained whether he's capable of being the kind of man that he that that she needs and if he even wants to be that type of man which he hands him the keys she has given over the control of the relationship he's making all the decisions the directions whole nine yards that leads to several other mistakes number one when she makes a mistake number one mistakes two through six are going to drop like dominoes number two she's going to negotiate from a position of weakness why because number three she has given away all her power in the relationship because if he's making all the decisions and she's pleasing him and and she's doing so and and she's giving, she's loving, she's cherishing, she's pleasing, she's pursuing, and all that she's giving is only coming back to her in a trickle. Ultimately, down the road, she's going to end unfulfilled, unhappy, 
and dissatisfied in the relationship. That's why many relationships end in divorce because of mistakes that they make during the dating phase. Um, they end up, number four, out of harmony with God's biological blueprint that I just shared with you with the sperm and the egg, because the sperm is supposed to pursue the egg. God is sending us a message of how we ought to function in a relationship. The egg should is incapable of pursuing a sperm. Now, here's another metaphor. Here's another metaphor that dictates how we ought to function in a relationship. Men are bees. Women are flowers. Flowers emit an incredible aroma that attracts bees, but they are absolutely incapable of pursuing a bee. Bees were designed to pursue flowers. And the fifth and final, well, the fifth mistake that women make routinely is they are out of harmony with their theological blueprint, which means if they're pursuing a man, they are out of harmony with God's word because that's never what God destined for them because they give all their power away. Many women end up being doormats because they've given away their power and they have no negotiating, right, negotiating rights in the relationship. And finally, number six, so many women operate out of fear. They're not happy. They're not satisfied. They're not fulfilled. They are loving. They're pleasing. They're giving. They're sacrificing, but they're getting very little of that back. But they're fearful of saying anything to their partner because they don't want, they don't want to disturb his comfort zone. They don't want him to get mad and upset. Well, if you're not happy, you have to say something. There's an art to saying it the right way, but you have to say something. Otherwise, you'll remain stuck forever. Well said. So tell the listeners about your your course and what if if a woman was to decide to take part in it, what they could expect when they did. So here's what happens in my it's in my 12 week course, how to attract uh, the man of your dreams in 90 days or less. 12 weeks, three months. Here's what happens. At the end, for, for the women who come into the program uh, and roll up their sleeves and go to work and do and learn the techniques and we do the role plays, there's, there's homework assignments with every, with every technique that I teach. And, and not only do I teach the techniques, but I role play the techniques because I want them. Now, the point I want to make real clear is this. I don't give these women theory. I give them time tested and proven techniques because the majority of the women who come through the program and, and roll up their sleeves and learn it and master these techniques, these women start off heartbroken, many of them, majority of them single, and they end up attracting and marrying the greatest guys ever. And I end up, if not performing the wedding for them because I'm a pastor. I'm certainly at those weddings because I teach them techniques. I teach them what to say, what to do, what not to say, and what not to do. And not just for single women, but married women come through my program who are in relationships, who are married, families, children, whole nine yards, and they're miserable. And I teach them how to, how to, how to teach their men to love you. Here's the problem. Here's the problem that the average and typical woman has. Most of us guys come into the relationship and we, we here's the mistake that women make. Women assume that we know how to love them, maybe because we've been in a relationship or relationships prior to meeting them. And we assume that we know how to do that. Here's why that's a mistake. Every woman on this planet is different and every woman is, is different in the way they think, the way they function, the way they behave, whole nine yards. And so we must deal with a woman on an individual basis. We need to go into that relationship. We've got to find out and determine what she likes, what she doesn't like, what turns her on, what turns her off. We cannot have a one approach fits all. And that's what, what many of us do. And so I teach the women, single and married, to teach their men 
how to love them the way the women want to be loved. I teach the women how to love, them, how to teach their men to love them on their terms and not his. And when they, when they come through at the end, here's what they tell me, pastor, for the first time in my life, I feel empowered. I feel like I am in control. I know what to say. I know what to do. They say, Pastor, why didn't you share this with me 10, 15, 20 years ago? I would have avoided all the mistakes that I made. And many of them would not have been in the marriages that they end up, ended up in and divorced, many of them, had they known this information. But better, my, I say better late than never. So they end up, they end up not only empowered, but confident. And there's a reason for it, because when you come to my program, it's a lifetime commitment that you have me as a coach. I don't care if you call me five years down the road, pastor, I met somebody, I like this guy. What do I do? I take them through the process and I stay with them. It's, it's a, it's a life changing experience. Okay, well, tell us about your book. Tell us what we can expect when we read it and where to get it from. The book is entitled The Art of Womanhood. The subtitle is Teaching Your Man to Love You the Way You Want to Be Loved Without Him Knowing He's Being Taught. There's an art to doing that. And let me explain. No man wants to know he's being taught by his woman. Because if he learns that, he's going to drop out of that school. And so, and so there's an art to teaching him how to love her the way she wants and needs to be loved. All right. That's the name. That's the title and the subtitle of the book. You can get the book on, on Amazon. You can go to my website, The Art of Woman, W-O-M-A-N, womanhood.org, the art of womanhood.org. You can also purchase the book on my website. You can also read and learn and find out, you get some information, testimonials about my 12-week course as well. The book was, is obviously, is designed for women. Now, because I'm a very transparent guy, Curtis, um, I share the mistakes that I made in my marriages, plural. Um, and, and because women identify with where I was and the mistakes that I was, and I share how I had to learn, but I also share the mistakes that I made and how they, and how they ruined my first marriage, okay? Because I just, I just, I did not know. And, and so it is a very, very transparent book about me, but it's about the impact that how women will be affected and when they are not loved. So I give them some very, very pertinent and important information on things that they can and that they need to do in their current relationships or the very next time that they are in a relationship so that they will not make the mistakes that they've made prior. I believe based on the reviews, I believe that it will be a life-changing experience for the women who, who read it. Well, tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. My 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 next 12 week course is going to start in January. I haven't uploaded that date yet. I'm going to I'm going to do that within within the next week. Um I'm in the I'm I'm more than I'm about halfway through with my current course and so I'm going to be opening up registration for the new course for and this and, and and this is going to be predominantly for single women it will start like the first sunday in january but the first weekend in march i have an event for married couples it's entitled reviving your honeymoon in 48 hours or less and that's going to be um 
I believe the date is March 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I did it this past March. Um, and I will tell you that the couples that came through, I, I was told by one couple, they pulled me to the side, uh, by one person, they pulled me to the side and, and they say, Pastor, my spouse does not know what I'm about to tell you. But I've already I've already been to a divorce attorney to file for a divorce, and they and and when they left, they were in a completely different place, an awesome place. It was a life. I'm, I'm I, I keep I'm 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 driving this term uh, in the ground, but I don't know I don't know a better term. It was a life changing experience for those couples. We're going to do that again. I highly recommend every couple. And it does not mean that your marriage has to be in trouble. You can have a good marriage, but you just want to take it higher. You could be at a seven, but you want to go to an eight, nine, or 10. This weekend is for you as well. Those are my two um, most recent pro- my, you know, projects that are, that are going to be coming up in the next cup in the next few months all right we'll close this out with some final thoughts maybe if that was something i forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about it just any final thoughts you have for the listeners and also give out your website again in closing the the my website is the art of womanhood w-o-m-a-n womanhood.org the art of womanhood.org scripture is real clear it says, Proverbs 17, 22 says, Mary heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. And here's what I want to say, particularly to women, because of my ministry to women. I'm paraphrasing. A merry heart would do, doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit in particular will put a woman in the ground because women are so emotional when they're not happy. It has a deleterious effect and it cracks open the door to life threatening illness and disease. But what I want women to know is you don't have to stay there. I don't care how how bad you think your marriage is. I don't think I don't care how impossible it may look. I have had women who have come to me and thought their marriage was over and I've taught them one technique it is it, and it has changed their it changed their marriage in, in minutes. I'm not talking about hours, weeks, months or years. I'm talking about minutes. When you know what to do and you know what to say and you and more importantly, you know what not to do and what not to say. There's hope out here. You, it Things can be better, but you cannot get stuck and fearful that, oh, nothing's going to work. He's never going to change. No, stuff stuff can change. Call me. All right. And I'm not making any guarantees because it takes two to tango, but I'm going to empower you and your confidence is going to go through the roof. You will be glad you did. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, and to all you women out there, like Frank just said, you know, follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible and have them to give Frank a call and check out his course and his books. And if you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. Frank, thank you so much for joining me and listeners. Thank you for listening. And Frank, I'm glad we had a chance to do this and hopefully we can help a lot of people out there. Amen. Amen. I thank you for this platform. I thank you for reaching out to me. It is absolutely my honor. I thank you, my brother.
For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.